Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you the Legoland or Legoland Park set. This is primarily sold exclusively at physical Legoland theme park locations. This is being brought to you, this video, on behalf of Patreon supporter Matt M. So if you like the fact that I'm reviewing this set, you can thank Matt. Ten minifigures are included here, two of them employees, the rest of them patrons, and then you get this plethora of colorful builds of different sizes. I'm going to start our tour of the park at the entrance. This is the main entrance archway where all the patrons would go in and out. Plus you got a couple little spots where you can sneak around the sides. This looks very uh, childish and old school for a modern 2019 vintage set, but it's supposed to, you know, in, in real life, the, well, a lot of the things in Lego land theme parks are designed to look like giant Lego construction. So this is supposed to invoke color and creativity and just connecting various things together. So this is actually doing its job pretty well, even though it looks kind of odd, I'd say to, to us as, uh, as modern Lego fans, but it was kind of weird to put it together as well, but I get it. I definitely get it. Now there is one thing that's missing here and that is the name of the location. So you get the Lego land that's just on a sticker there, but the specific location should be on this brick right here. They give you an entire sticker sheet so you can choose which one that you want to put up there. You know, choose your, your favorite one or your most local one or the last one you went to, whichever you want it to be, you know, just pick a sticker and try to stick it in the middle. This is the ticket booth and you'll see most of the decorations throughout this set accomplished via stickers, not printed pieces, though that ticket is a printed piece. They give you actually two of those in the set. You can get some brochures here. They also have a map that shows the larger attractions in the place there. And then just around the back, it has a little checkout register and just enough space for a minifig to stand there. Here's a merchandise stand with five different Lego sets that people can purchase, as well as the huge figure uh, sized coffee mugs or just cups there that you can pick up. No additional details around the back of that. And they also have a couple of costume headgear pieces that you can purchase. And this is just a little sign for a spot where you can get your picture taken and you can associate that with whatever ride or whatever location you want. Here's a signpost and large map combined a little build. The signpost itself is kind of crazy with just how many signs it has, but each of those stickers on a uh, one by three tile correlates to a build that's actually in the set. So they don't, they don't tease you in any way. And then you just have a single sticker for the map there that again shows only the largest attractions. Speaking of largest attractions, here's the biggest one that they include in the set. And it really dominates the landscape. It's the dragon based coaster. And it just has three cars. It goes up a hill just a little bit into a castle or through a castle gate, comes around a corner. And then you can let it go right here, right there. And it'll just roll around a little bit. So there's not a whole lot that you can do with it, but at least you have a full loop, a little bit of elevation change, which I think is good. And this will hold a total of three figures on there. The bases on the coaster cars are dark blue and everything else is built on top with relatively small pieces. That was a cool idea to use the leaf pieces here in the bright green color for the eye, as well as a little bit of extra scales coming off the back of a dragon. Got the little hands here on the front and this front car actually only holds a figure that is standing because there are only two studs down there at the base for them to stand in there. And there's nothing for them to hold on to, unfortunately. The other two cars are identical and uh, to each other and they have enough room. I'll just go ahead and pull these off so you can see down in there. You have enough room for at least one figure each. I mean, technically you could put a sitting figure in there and a standing figure as well if you wanted to increase the the population of a, a ride at a, a given time. But uh, to make it a little bit more safe, just put one person on there and then you can bring the safety bar down. The castle is decorated up with a bunch of stickers to represent the Lion Knights. And they've got a simulated portcullis in the back. You can imagine that it has just opened or perhaps you're scared as you go around that it might close down on you, but don't worry, it's, it's not going anywhere. It's just right there. This is mostly kind of a facade. You know, there's not a lot of depth to this, but there is just enough for some things in the bases of these turret structures. See, this is how it looks from around the back. And on one side is a restroom. And unfortunately, it's completely open. That's awkward. They didn't give any sort of coverage back here. It's also awkward that they have 
a public toilet that has a plunger in it. That's not uh, not usual. This is just a sticker up here. Yeah, kind of weird, right? We also have a changing room over on this side, and this has a, a sticker for the changing table itself, and they've got a little sink off to the side, and well, that's just that. You know, not a lot going on here, but yeah, to me, it's extraordinarily awkward that they don't even have a door for the bathroom stall. I think they could have reinvested some of the parts budget to make that happen. Here's the pirate themed triple spinner ride. You can put figures in each of the little buckets around the sides and each one has its own little thing that, that spins with it. So this one has the parrot. Over here you have a frog and this one has some gold. It's supposed to be just raw gold coming right out of the ground. And the idea is you spin the center and then each of these little seat areas spins as well. And yeah, that's just that, you know, this is fully built up here. The skull has a red uh, gem inside of it, and this works well enough. Uh, you do want to probably keep your fingers down on one of these, but I mean, just as far as how this, this works, I think it's plenty good. This little submarine is able to hold at least two figures, definitely more if you have some of them standing up in there. You can also open up the front if you want to be a little bit more immersive with it if that if that's going to be your your entrance although figures can't really fit through there but yeah that's how that's how it's uh, constructed they've used the medium aqua color to i'm assuming represent a little bit of a hybrid between the idea of water and beautiful water at that and just the color of light you know sunlight filtering through beautiful turquoise water down to a very sandy and very bright colored sea bed because obviously we're seeing some items down at the base that's like a stack of some sort of coral possible seaweed over here it could be a representation of coral speaking of coral that, <laughs> these three uh, cheese slopes that represent something to discover down there are in the relatively new coral color these could represent coral or anemones you can move these little arms around a little bit if you want got the a crab over there and i don't know exactly what this is supposed to be could be a stack of of a uh, hard coral but uh, you can also detach this part way from the plate and then you can move this around a bit see it's just on a it's on a turntable so you can move it slightly but that feels awkward to me i don't know if it's supposed to do that but you can do that i think you know in universe this is mostly just to be supposed to be a, a place where kids get in and then they use their own imaginations to go on you know, imaginary adventures and they just look through the window and stuff and imagine that they're actually doing some ocean ex exploration and stuff which totally makes sense you can also spin up the propeller <laughs> here's the tallest attraction it's the observation tower they give you no way to actually get up there but you use your imagination and the hand of a higher power to open up the top of this and put figures in there standing so you can fit a maximum of four figures you know one at each corner there and yeah, that's you know good enough to have them looking out the windows and the big deal here i kind of like the the build of this top that's pretty cool it just just looks good and interesting to me sticker up there but the big deal of this as a lego build is that it will spin a big red knob down at the base which is in this case actually appropriate and i, I also appreciate the idea of the stairs here you know even though they don't have a, an opening a door or anything just uh, i can kind of imagine figures going up these stairs and i can imagine there being a door here uh, they could have used just a couple more pieces to make that a bit more immersive but there's no way they could have actually fit figures in there so i get it yeah i get it the main thing is that you can have figures up here and then you can slowly turn this around or you can up the speed a bit <laughs> turn it into a scary ride for the figures if you want but this is nicely done you know it's geared from the base and just goes together well it doesn't take up too many pieces for what it does this is my personal favorite part of the set this is the representation of parts of mini land where in actual lego land parks they have real lego things that are built up by actual lego master builders and they just glue most of the stuff together so that it lasts and these things will stay out for years and years and years and you can just see a lot of the individual things that are represented here some of them are a little bit more recognizable than others i'm rotating the whole thing by big ben obviously statue of liberty liberty over there got a boat right here excuse me a boat right here 
right? And then an airplane and an airport and stuff. Just recognizable stuff that looks pretty cool to me. Like, I, I really like this type of build. And they put so many different things together here that it makes it especially enjoyable. You know, it's not trying to be too realistic with the placements of everything. I kind of like that. Although some Legoland parks may actually use that exact arrangement overall. Uh, this is the little trip over into Asia. I like the, the Sakura uh, tree there. Mount Fuji uh, also going over to the Middle East. So, I mean, again, similar level of detail here and just charming, you know, very charming, as is this third section here, which has the train. It doesn't quite line up with the tunnel entrance and exit. See, it's offset. That's that's a little bit awkward. That's too bad. I, I do wish that uh, lined up a lot better than it did. Actually, it's just a, 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 the arc, the arch, but uh, you know, use it as a tunnel, I'm, I'm sure, to go with the, the train. Got the castle up, up top as well. And yeah, just each of these, I think, is special in its own way, in good ways. Here are just some additional little things. Push broom, some printed tiles, and a stickered tile there. This bench, unfortunately, only holds a single figure, unless you have one figure hanging off the edge. Got a potted flower over here, and that's just a trash can. This is a food cart that tries to put as many things together as possible in a very small space, so you can pick up some ice cream here, and you can also pick up some hot dogs. They have the containers for a couple of condiments, one of these is loose on the grill right now. I'll just move that off to the side. And they have a nice little area that you can open up. Uh, there's not much really that you can fit into that space. Maybe you can put money in there when somebody pays, <laughs> but it's just barely, you know, not, not really very usable space, but it's nice to have something that opens up. And I like the level of detail here. And finally, there are a couple of drinks. Uh, just put them in the hands of some minifigures, I guess, and a barrel of fruits and veggies for your healthy alternatives to hot dogs and ice cream. So one carrot and one banana. It's time to look at minifigures. And first I want to show you these minifig related builds. So this is a nice little brick built baby carriage, which is, uh, well, it's good. You know, it's, it's small, but well detailed, well shaped. It will actually roll and they have a little cover over the top. Also, you get the second generation baby there with the proper neck and just the basic white color and then they have the uh, wheelchair set up which is good of course you don't have to put this specific guy in there but it's nice that they include one of these we're going to do our up close looks at the minifigs two at a time these are the park employees they have identical torsos between them i don't know what that tool is that the one on the right is holding i'm assuming that it's something that's used to uh, corral in extra parts from the play pens that have tons and tons of Lego parts that uh, can get out of hand that kids can just play with freely. Uh, something to bring all the extra pieces back in. Kind of like uh, a rake, but Lego specific. So they have the Legoland exclusive printing there, including around the back. Got the dual, uh, dual molding for the head gear piece there. And an alternate face because this lady is probably going to be overwhelmed by just how much carnage there is in the uh, brick play pens and just how much uh, the stuff has been moved all around that she needs to clean up. Here are a couple of adult guest minifigs, parents. Uh, you also have one of those extra brochures in the hand of one. They do include two of those clear pieces that allow you to hold the piece like that. And they do that so that you don't have to put it in the normal way in the hand where you'd actually have to grab the sticker that would do damage to the sticker. So they didn't want to do that. It would be technically uh, uh, an illegal connection that way if you just put it sideways into the hand. And you have an alternate face there for this guy being on a ride. And well, I don't know if she's just really, really happy that the kids are so happy or if she's taking a nap on the bench. Here are a couple kids and I don't think there's anything new or exclusive here. Actually, amongst any of the figures, now that I'm looking at them, any of the the visitor figures, you know, obviously the employee figures had those exclusive torsos, but as for all the parts for the regular people, I think they're just mixes of existing things and they tried to make them colorful, which is always a good thing. No alternate prints here. Here are a couple more kids. I personally especially like that torso print on the left. Uh, each of these does have an alternate face to go with them. There are the prints around the backs and the alternate faces are not as happy. 
don't know exactly what has gone on, but you can use your imagination, and it's good to have very different expressions. You know, not everything should be 100% happy all the time, unless you want it to be, and here you have the option. And here are the last figures. They are adults, so you have four kids and four adults in the set as park visitors, and I personally don't think that's the right ratio. I think there should have been more kids than adults here. Uh, this guy shows what his original face usage was. He was used as the uh, not Elvis character going, uh -huh, in in the diner modular building set, but you can just use that to represent like a, a yawn or something. And that's that. A lot of little builds translates to a lot of little leftover parts for this set. This is not normal. There are far more spare pieces for this set than usual. There were, I believe it was 14 main bags, and then each of those had another small bag or two inside, and then each of those had at least one, usually more, uh, of these types of parts that then would have spares to go with them. And finally, here's a look at the spent sticker sheet and get an idea of how many stickers were used in total. So yeah, quite, quite a few, quite a lot of them. So the suggested retail price for this set that has over 1,300 pieces is $90 US. I personally don't have access to reliable current data for other countries. If you do, feel free to leave a comment down below for the sake of other viewers. I look at this as a collection of sets. You know, it's like a super set. It has a whole bunch of stuff put together. And as that, I think there's just so much fun to be had here. I think a lot of kids will enjoy this. I personally recommend that parents visiting Legoland parks buy this set and don't show it to your kids. Don't show it to them till they get back, especially if you're not able to go very frequently or if it's kind of a once in a lifetime or lifetime or almost once in a lifetime kind of thing. Uh, I think that the kids would really, really, really love that surprise of being able to bring the experience home and then recreate it and then add to it and change it up on their own. I think there's enough here that they'll be able to recognize that that'll add a tremendous value to their, their life. It doesn't have as much value, I think, to people who haven't actually been to one of the parks. Uh, you, know, you need to have that connection, recognizing things. That's when it really comes to life for you. Even for things that aren't done completely 100% accurate and don't have all the minifigure fe features that you would like, I really wish that bathroom stall had a door on it. Even just a basic single flap that would cover it up. That would have helped things a lot and would have made a lot more uh, sense uh, to me. Uh, I think that's the biggest miss by far of this entire set. The rest of the stuff is fine. Uh, it is a it is a little bit unwieldy, I have to say. Uh, you know, this is a lot of little things like this. What do you do with that? This. What do you do with that? Especially thinking of kids. You know, kids aren't really good at organization and keeping different parts of toys together. Uh, this really, really, really could benefit from a base plate. I strongly recommend that anyone who's going to buy this at a Legoland park, like I'm saying. Uh, also get at least one 48 by 48 base plate for it, or a couple two to four uh, green base plates. They're just the regular 32 by 32, whatever color you want, but I, I think green will look good because of some of the green bases to some of these things. But that'll help a lot to be able to just stick some of these things in places and then create a park and then kids can move the figures around without worrying about moving all the rides and attractions and things around with it. I mean, these bigger ones aren't a big deal. You know, they don't necessarily need to be attached to uh, a studded base. This one would be nice to put just right down in the center or something. So you can look around, you know, put the figures up there and then look around the whole place. Or you can put it in the middle over here of the, the coaster track. Uh, the coaster track, as simple as it is, I think does the trick. I think it's good enough. Uh, I think it captures enough there. Uh, would have been wonderful to have more, but I, I'm happy with that. Those coaster track pieces are relatively expensive and they usually will bump up the price of a set quite a lot. I'm glad that they didn't in this case. So yeah, value here feels pretty proper. The number of minifigures is great. Like I said, I do wish that they had more kids than adults. 
for park visitors just would have made more sense. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this thing. And I'm glad that, uh, again, Matt M from Patreon made this happen, put, put in this request. I purchased the set and now all of you get to see me review it. Hope you've enjoyed this. I've also done the builds for it. Got the real-time build that was streamed and you can watch it on replay or you can check out the speed build on the Jang Builds It channel. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks again to Matt and I'll talk to you again soon.